In this video, I am still on my fast with liquids. And in a few days, I'm going to break this fast. I'm going to explain some of the things that I've put in place to prepare properly for the breaking of the fast so that the transition from no food in nearly a month to introducing food back into the system is done in a safe, responsible, and proper way to reintroduce nutrients by way of fruits and vegetables. So this is me getting everything put in place that I can show you the different elements that I've put together based on both scientific and homeopathic research that will boost my body to a different level when I'm ready to re-engage with food in about three to four days from the time that I put this together. I want to get everything together and put in place so that by the time I break the fast, everything is where it needs to be and I can smoothly transition into this process of reintroducing food into my body and that meant that there were certain elements that I want to use that if I don't buy them today they will not be ready by the time I'm ready to break the fast and I will jump ahead and say that one of those elements is avocados they take a couple of days to ripen and so by the time they're ripe I will be ready to go and I'm going to go into a few more details about this process starting now. Hello, I'm Michael, and it is April 7, 2024. And I actually don't know what time it is, but it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.30 p.m., maybe 5 p.m. and um, I don't have my watch on me so I'm kind of timeless right now and tomorrow is the April 8th 2024 eclipse tomorrow is the April 8th 2024 eclipse and so I've been fasting for this eclipse and right now it's been 28 days since I've ate any solid food. 28 days. And I've gone without food for 28 days. And I will continue this fast until Wednesday. Which will make day number 31. So tomorrow will be uh, day 29. Tuesday will be day 30. And then... Wednesday will be day 31. So I will break my fast on day 31. And that's the topic of today is breaking the fast on Wednesday, right? And so that will be April 10th, 2024, when I break the fast and this will go through how I plan on going about it. And I'm going to show you a few things, if you're interested, about some of the dietary protocols that I'm going to employ when I transition off of this fast. In a brief summary, I'm going to start slowly with Japanese-style miso soup comprised of vegetable broth, mushrooms, and ground up lettuce. And I'm going to eat that the majority of Wednesday. And then I'm going to continue consuming miso soup the rest of the week, layering in fruits like strawberries, blueberries, and then grapefruit. And then on Friday, I'm gonna have a Japanese meal 
probably comprised of uh, Japanese prepared broccoli, pickled cucumbers, little vegetable tempura, and miso soup. And then I don't know what I'm going to do Saturday, but Sunday I'm going out with a relative and we're going to have an Ethiopian uh, meal prepared by Ethiopians from Ethiopia. And it's going to be absolutely fabulous. So that's kind of what my agenda is this week because today also marks the first day of an eight day PTO. So I'm, I'm off for eight days, paid time off. So I got plenty of time to do videos and to set up content, to maybe write some software, read some books, study some things and get into a few items. So I want to put this video together as a document of what I was doing at this time during the cycle of the April 8, 2024 eclipse. Because I did not fast for health reasons, even though I did the research about the health benefits of fasting. That's covered in some of my earlier videos. But, and I might allude to some of that here in this discussion, but my primary reason for fasting last September and October was for that fast, that for that eclipse that occurred on October 14th. And then this fast is for the, the eclipse that is taking place tomorrow. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna to have a total blackout on communications, on technology, everything's going to be shut down, and I'm gonna be in isolation for meditation. I have not yet decided if I'm gonna be out to observe the eclipse. It's recommended according to Navajo tradition and other Native American traditions and insights from their long history with this earth that individuals stay indoors, venerate the divine, and align themselves to the energies that are pervading the earth. I've developed myself to where I can gaze directly at the sun, which means that I can also gaze directly at an eclipse should I choose. But my most important priority and the central reason why I fasted was to be ready for the energetic shifts that are taking place and that are occurring. And so I want to make sure that my body was ready, that I was purged physiologically, psychologically, mentally, as well as spiritually in alignment with the energetic shifts that started occurring in the year 2020, but that I didn't get hip to until sometime late 2022. And so you got the Schumann residence change in 2023. You have other energetic arrangements that are occurring with the coordination of the moon and the sun in January of this year and January in years prior, you had the alignment of the Earth, the Sun, and the planet Sirius. And so we are in a time where energy is changing. And it takes preparation and the ordering of your activities, your days, and your practices to put yourself in a position for the gifts that the cosmos, the universe, and the divine, and the great consciousness, the earth itself, has to bestow. So with that said, let's get down to more mundane practical matters, and that is diet. Fruit, vegetables, and mushrooms are exceptionally important for health. And what I did is, um, let's see what I got here.
I uh, took the liberty of writing, well, the wind won't allow me to really pull this out cleanly, but I accumulated dozens and dozens of health dietary notes that I'm going to turn into videos and disclose. I'm going to simplify it, but I've learned a lot about nutrition, fruit, vegetables. And the summary on that is you don't need to eat everything, but there are some things that are better than others that will give you the most bang for your buck. And I could share two of them that I can drop right now, and that is avocados and mushrooms. Those are the two number one things that if you eat those, you got to cook your mushrooms. Avocados, you eat those straight. You can mix them up, create guacamole, create a mix, create butter, create a spread, whatever it is. But avocados is going to be the number one thing alongside mushrooms. And so cook the mushrooms for health and benefiting the body. The third thing is going to be beans. A variety of beans gives you a tremendous amount of protein. And the right beans will give you protein that rivals meat. So I'm moving along because I just want to record what I was doing right now to get ready for breaking my fast. And you're more than welcome to follow along and see what I do. First, I'm gonna consume this uh, coconut water. I don't have my Contigo flask with me. So uh, I had to go get some supplies today, quite frankly, because all I've been drinking is liquids, and I haven't been eating any food. So I had to get all, of, not just the food, but the things that help you with eating the food. And, uh, where you at, little spider? The things that help you with eating the food. And uh, got me some styrofoam cups because in the short term, I'm gonna be doing things with liquids where I wanna reduce the amount of cleanup that I have to do with my little Contigo cups. I'm going to, uh, this coconut water here, I let sit in my car for about an hour. It was a little warm today, almost 80 degrees. So I was able to get this from ice cold, not quite ice cold, but you know how it is when you buy it at a store, it's real cold which is great if you're gonna drink it straight, but well, I'm glad that didn't fall in here. But it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been a big deal if it, if it did. So what I'm gonna do, put that in there, and then I got a mixture here of ashwagandha powder, carob bean powder, C-A-R-O-B, and cocoa powder and I was gonna bring my milk frother so I wouldn't have to uh, you know shake it up in here but I forgot to bring my milk frother so I'm just gonna pour the powder right in here I've done this several times but I prefer to use a milk frother because I can get a smoother consistency and even though I did a fast with just liquids, I found the right liquids that I'm gonna consume from here on out. I said in last video, I was gonna do a video about tea that will come, just not yet. I had some things come up where I couldn't do the video on tea the way I wanted to as far as scheduling. But the video I'm doing right now what I'm talking about right now, it has to be done today. And so, 
That's why all of this is being talked about right now. And I'll do the tea video later. So, only thing about styrofoam cups when it's windy is uh, I got a garbage can right next to me out here in the park. It's wonderful out here. The scene is beautiful. I got ants all around. I got berries and stuff in that bag over there. So, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean my fruits with baking soda. And we're gonna we're gonna walk through how that is done. And so once I finish shaking this up, I could drink it right out of this bottle, but I'm not because I want to drink it out of the styrofoam cup, just because. watch what happens when I pour this so it went from pink coconut water to a liquid that looks like that and what happens is I have improved the alkalinity the alkaline nature of this this coconut water and I've infused it with the herbal and polyphenol and flavonoid aspects of these constituent elements. That's awesome. I think I've drunk it down enough where I can show this without it spilling. But that's kind of what it looks like. I actually didn't drink very much today when I got up because I had things I had to do. So I drank about 16 ounces of distilled water mixed with trace mineral drops. No, eight ounces of trace mineral, eight ounces of distilled water with trace mineral drops. And then I did um, another eight ounces after that of um, uh, distilled water with um, cell food. I usually take my time drinking this, but I want to continue on with the conversation and not have this sit here. Never drink it all the way down to the bottom. Leave a little bit down there because what that does is that leaves all of the uh, sediment that is accumulated uh, leaves that behind so that doesn't uh, trigger digestion So I got quite a few things out here and I got a plan. So my plan is I'm going to use distilled water with baking soda to clean my fruits. So let me show you how I do it. And I wanted to do it outside today for a couple of reasons. So I want uh, the sun to get so my, my original plan was to get out of here earlier and have the sun access have the sun beam down on these avocados. Because I'm going to eat avocados. But avocados, when you buy them in the store, they are usually not ready to eat because they got to ripe a little bit more. In my experience, it takes anywhere from three to four days for store-bought avocados to ripen. In my experience. So, 
I want these avocados out here so that they can get a little bit of sun. So these avocados are gonna stay out here even past the time this video is done because I want them, because they're real cool right now. That means they've probably been in a refrigerator overnight. Because I know some supermarkets, they will put them out by day and put them up by night. I don't know if that's 100% true in this case, but they're awfully cool. And I bought these about, I'd say maybe four hours ago, and they still feel like they came out of the refrigerator recently. But it just may be the shelf that they were on and how cool they were. So I want these avocados to get sunlight. They were born in the sun and they're no stranger to the sun. So put these avocados in the path of the sun so that they can catch those photons, this pre-eclipse photon energy. I feel some gooeyness on some of them. They definitely need to be cleaned. Got me a little trash bag I'm gonna put in the trash can here shortly. And then, here is my little tub here. Here it is. And then I got my little bit, got my berries. I'm gonna wash these right out here outside, but I also want them to get some sun. I'm gonna tell y'all uh, the truth. Growing up, and up until right this moment, I never liked strawberries. That's the truth. So, this will be the first time I have willingly selected to eat strawberries as an adult. Because I've tried them off and on as an adult. My mother was the first person to introduce me to strawberries. She picked it right off the ground. We went to a park somewhere here somewhere around here and she gave me a strawberry when I was a little little kid I was about maybe five or six years old we plucked it right out of the ground but you know I wanted something that was sweet and strawberries are not sweet like that strawberries are not sweet like that now blue these blueberries I don't need them to be as sun exposed so it's fine that I don't have anything else to put those in but I just want to get these out of here and into a container without spilling them on the ground. But the story about strawberries, I'm gonna tell you in a little bit. I'm gonna do a full on video about fruit, but this is about breaking a fast and getting ready with the right tools for breaking a fast. got to be careful because the more I empty these bags the lighter they become and uh, did not expect uh, this level of wind today at all but I should have because when the eclipse is um, beaming that when the eclipse occurs the actual temperature differentials are going to change as well the typical ones have cooler temperatures in association with the eclipse. Now anyone who has watched my videos before knows, and even though the sun is not like super beaming, there's still enough light, natural light, for all of, for all of this, uh, for all of this to work. Because the key is not so much the sun directly hitting this and scorching it but just to have the photons circulating got my mushrooms at reduced price I love that oh I forgot I did an onion 
and then grapefruit. This has traditionally been my fruit of choice after a fast or in one fast that I did, I did a fast on grapefruit juice. And I didn't look, the lighting wasn't great when I bought these in the store. And I didn't notice that this one has a little bit of a mark on it. That doesn't bother me. I'm still going to eat it. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to clean the surface bacteria off of there. So yeah, there's been some infection there. So you could say I got a bad batch. So, so I got, yeah, I got a bad batch. That's why I like to buy my uh, grapefruit at Sprouts typically because I usually have more options there when it comes to getting clean fruit. And I usually don't run into situations like this, right? But we're gonna make it work as, as much as possible. So the, the trick is clean the, the surface bacteria, right? And then I'm gonna take a knife and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an incision later on, right? And I'm gonna make an incision later on and the part that's already been uh, inhabited, I'll just skip it, right? And I'll eat the part that hasn't been been touched. But I'm so glad I went with my instincts and only bought one bag. So, I'm gonna get those clean. And that is all the vegetables but I've been, and I'm gonna use these carrots, I'm gonna chop them up real fine, and that's gonna go into my miso soup. And let's see. This is the vegetable broth that I decided to go with because it does not have extra sugar, it doesn't have any sugar in it. It doesn't have any canola oil. It is just water, tomato paste, sea salt, which I really didn't want any sea salt in my stuff, but I'll take it in this case. Uh, vegetables such as carrots, onions, leeks, and mushrooms. So this is as close to uh, miso broth as I can get, because I wanted miso broth, but the miso broth that was on sale or that was being sold had other ingredients that I just wasn't going to go with. So, this is how that looks, my friends. And, by the way, if you're wanting to know what I did with the uh, coconut water earlier, I used a little bit of uh, French chicory. No, I'm sorry. No French chicory. That was for the tea. I'll talk about that in the tea video. Uh, this is the ashwagandha that I use. It doesn't matter what brand, as long as it's organic. I buy my stuff based on the price. Anyway, carrot bean, and then the cocoa powder. I believe the one I'm using right now is um, the Sprouts brand uh, cocoa powder. And then I got some fermented cocoa powder that I'm gonna go with after that. But I got more to say about cocoa powder in another video. All right, so as you see, I'm actually reducing the number of bags that I got here. Got some compressed air. Is that the compressed air can be very handy in some of these situations. I am disappointed about the grapefruit, right? I'm, I'm disappointed about that. You know, that's why they invented genetically modified grapefruit because it's supposed to last longer. But I'd rather do this and deal with this than deal with genetically modified foods. The potential wasted product is worth it to me. It's worth it to me. And I could have, you know, inspected the bag a little more closely, but I was a rush. So because I rushed, 
I am actually the one responsible for this. So when it comes to the quality of the grapefruit that I got today. So I take responsibility for that. It's nobody else's fault but mine. So anyway, so I got this uh, distilled water. It's a dollar fifty. I'm gonna use it to clean these vegetables and these fruits. Let me stop using the word vegetables because I don't have any vegetables here that I'm really cleaning. But I'm gonna clean these fruits with this. You put this away. I just want you to see what kind of broth would be recommended for this. One that has no added sugars and no added processed oils of any kind. Even if it says certified organic canola oil, know that canola oil is a seed oil that is still a leading cause of inflammation. So, I actually have a little bit of, I had a little bit of uh, baking soda left in a separate bag. Let me see if I can find that. Where are you at? Also had a little bit of a uh, distilled water on when I was doing my fasting protocol, right? Well, not was, I still am, but I'm almost at the end of the fasting, the part of the fasting protocol that requires sti distilled water. So I got one more day of cell food left. So, but, uh, yeah, I might, uh, I have to decide what I'm gonna do on that. And then I got um, a strainer so I can strain some of this and um, let's try to find, oh, there it is. So that's a little bit of baking, but I don't have enough here to treat all of this fruit. So then when I was looking and I was trying to get a box of baking, so I usually get the box. I didn't know they came out with something like this where it's an easy pour uh, baking soda. So I'm gonna try this out to see that looks more convenient and easier to deal with than a box. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with um, this grapefruit because it kind of bothers me a little bit. So um, I like to use, um, I like to store my cleaned vegetables and fruits. I apologize. I got a, a, a I'm used to vegetables and fruits at the same time. So I'm gonna say vegetables and fruit, but we know here, I'm talking about fruit because avocado I learned is actually a technically it's a berry technically uh, avocado is a berry so anyway avocado is a berry but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna throw because I didn't I didn't bring a container well I got another large container over here but I want to use it for something else and I'm gonna put these grapefruits in here right and then I'm going to saturate them with water and baking soda and I'm just gonna let it sit in there and this is to treat the surface of the grapefruit You're thinking what I'm thinking. Wouldn't it be funny if this uh, had a spilt on me while I was pouring it? Because this is not it's not um, necessarily a very steady container. Fortunately, I've done a lot of this long enough where I've made mistakes like that. So, all right. So let's get that to let's go ahead and close this. And that um, baking soda is going to go all the way through there. Thank you. Let's put you in a little area here. So I'm gonna let that um, penetrate. 
and um, for good measure. And I, and I thought I bought it enough uh, distilled water that will take care of all of this. So I think I'm still good on that. I may have to prioritize, but let's see. Um, what I wanted to do was take a look at this. Oh yeah, that's very convenient. I'm gonna do that. It has a, you can spoon it out or just pour it out a little bit in, in larger quantity. And then you got the small holes. I I, uh, I generally prefer to, to do this if I'm gonna use this at all. Oftentimes, you'll find me just taking a cap, but I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. You know, you can measure this stuff out precisely. There's a precise measurement of this, but I don't recall what that measurement is. So I just use whatever I feel is enough. So that should take care of us right there. So and I'm gonna let that soak for a while. And I'm gonna just put this over here. And it's far enough away from me that even if it if the bag bursts, I'm still good. So now I'm gonna get started on these strawberries. Because I got those uh, wide open here. And um, it actually is more efficient in terms of the amount of water I got left to switch containers. So I'm gonna use this container. If you've watched any past uh, videos, you've seen that I've used this container to eat out of. But since I'm not eating right now, and I won't have any meal that will, in the near future, that's gonna require this volume of a container, I'm gonna mix the strawberries and the blueberries into one container so that I can just get all of my cleaning done in one shot, or close to it. A little bit of dirt there. And the only downside to this approach is I gotta separate the two things after the fact. Let's see here. So, oh yeah, I got enough, uh, got enough. I got enough there. Let's put a little bit more. So, I'm not going to clean the avocados. I'm just going to let them be. I just want them out so that they can normalize in temperature. And I was hoping for a little bit more sun than this, but it's okay. Yeah, this is definitely a way to do baking soda right here. Now, I'm just going to put a nice, generous amount. Yes, indeed. And then, the next step. Now, one of the best ways to do this is actually put the baking soda in there for, in the water first and then stir it up, but I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it this way. So I wanted to measure, I wanted to make sure I had the water volume the way I needed to, for the amount of, but you definitely wanna stir it and get that sodium bicarbonate distributed. And see, when you do it like this, what ends up happening is it addresses some of the surface bacteria that has been trying to gain access to the fruit. And if you let this soak long enough, then when you drain it and you rinse it again, then what's going to happen is it's gonna preserve longer in the refrigerator. That's where I'm gonna put it. Put this in the refrigerator later on. So I'm gonna let that sit for a good while. So this is kind of how it looks, if it's even visible from this angle. Oh, look, some sun, great. We'll put this out here on the edge of the table. And my next priority here is to get the uh, 
mushrooms soaking. Reduced price means it's almost expired. And I've messed with almost expired mushrooms before. Believe me, uh, it, could, it could turn into a science experiment rather quickly in the refrigerator. But not worried about that too much. You just gotta watch out for what's called aflatoxins. But when you cook them, rather than eat them raw, based on the research I've done here recently, um, I know that the best recommendation based off of what I've gathered when I read between the lines, always cook your mushrooms. Always. Don't eat them raw. Do not eat the mushrooms raw. Clean them. Soak them. Drain them. And then cook them. In that order. So. So what I like to do is I rinse the mushrooms. And I try to avoid doing these processes with tap water because, especially with mushrooms, because mushrooms can absorb just about anything you put on them. I'm gonna let you have all that, buddy. I'm just gonna let this uh, have that. So these I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean twice. I'm gonna just let it live in this solution of water for a good while. Toss this. So I'm going to let this live in here like this for a good while. But this is how I wash them. And I don't normally let them sit in there for a while, okay, when I first clean them, but I'm almost out of water. And I want to preserve a little bit of that water here. I'm going to go back to the store and get uh, maybe uh, two more gallons of distilled water. And then um, I'm going to do a second cleansing later. See, that's the sediment. They're clean now, so they they're not actually going to spoil at this point. They only spoil when you let it when they sit out, like they do in the grocery store in, in their um, in the refrigerated uh, area, because they still have the surface bacteria accumulating. But this is just this this just had this process has totally modified that. So. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and drain this and then All right, so I drain that out and then I'm gonna take a fresh bag I'm gonna transfer these to a fresh bag like so There we go. And then, I'll go ahead and use the rest of this. Oh, that's perfect quantity. I still got left over for some trace mineral drops and cell food later this evening. And then, as you see, I got less material. I'm gonna go grab that. We don't want to litter in the park. All right, so that's perfect. 
And then what I'll also like to do is um, this is my little technique for storing food in a bag like this. I put it against my body like this and I get all the air out. See that way you don't need a food uh, saver. You don't need a vacuum sealer. Just do it like this. See, and also it gives you more space in a refrigerator. It gives you more space in a refrigerator. All right, so the time limit on soaking uh, fruits and vegetables with baking soda is roughly 15 minutes. But, oh look, there's a big, big ant. Just blow it away and it all is good. All right. Okay, so with avocados, you can feel if they're ready because if it's squishy inside, then it's ready to eat. This is very firm. So let me test some of these and see what it looks like. Firm, squishy, almost, yeah. This one probably could be eaten right now. Okay, almost ready to be eaten. Probably two days on that one. Firm. Burn, burn, burn. I bet this will be ready in about two days. This one is kind of icky. Let me just use this water here. Get some of that icky off. There we go. Burn. 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 Firm. And firm. Now, did you notice? You notice a, a trend with that? Is that the ones that are almost ready to eat, they're darker. They're darker. So, I have seen videos of avocados that people can eat that are not uh, that are still green on the outside, but I've never experienced that. They, they, I've always seen them get a little darker before they're ready. So, anyway, I got lucky on this one. This is actually the first time I bought avocados at Aldi's. I usually get them at Walmart at Kroger's, and I usually have a harder time. I also got these for uh, $2 less per bag of avocados than typically I, I get at Kroger and Walmart. But I also got really lucky because I still got the button on all of these. The button is what prevents the avocado from rotting on the inside. If you still got this little bulb right here on your avocado when you buy it and you leave it on there, the rate of bacterial spread inside the avocado goes down about 90%. And the avocado will still be uh, fresh and green in the majority of the avocado. And it'll still be a nice vibrant green color when you're ready to eat it, rather than that uh, darker yellowish color uh, that you see. And if it's a darker yellowish color, I still eat it, right? Now here the button is is uh, pretty much smashed, so this one might be a little bit more questionable. And I even see signs of that on the outside, but and and this one also has. But the rest of these, they got they got buttons on them, right? So they look really good. Organic avocados, they're gonna taste great when they're ready to eat. And then I got these carrots here that. I'm gonna slice them up into little chunks to go with the soup that I'm gonna make. So, and I'm also chop up the onion as well. So the onion, I also, I do clean the onion usually. Um, last month when I was using onions, I didn't, and it was fine. You peel all these layers out, and I find that since I was cooking them anyway, then, I don't eat the skin of the onion, so there's no point in actually uh, cleaning the outside of it. And so that's kind of what my process is for for all of this. And um, 
when I am satisfied with the soaking of those fruits over there, the strawberries and the blueberries, I'm then going to drain that water and maybe I'll put some more. Now, I'm gonna put them in a bag without water and then I'm going to go to uh, Kroger's and get some distilled water and I'm gonna fill that bag up with distilled water. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so I can clean out the rest of the baking soda that's left over after I drain it. And then I'm gonna shake it around like I did the mushrooms. And then I'm gonna drain that. And then I'm gonna transfer it, you know, the final stuff to a uh, little smaller quart size uh, resealable bags, Ziploc style bags. And then um, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and let them sit in there. So that way they can, um, you know, uh, do what they do in terms of uh, being ready to consume on Wednesday, Thursday time frame. Let me see if there's anything else I need to point out here. Oh yeah, there are some other things I need to point out, but I'm going to take a break here and we're going to go into it. I'm also going to rinse these grapefruits one more time as well. But I'm going to set them out here so that they can get access to some sun. Just a little bit. That would have healed them in the beginning if they wasn't, you know, in the grocery store. You know, the grocery store is convenient because, you know, we can go in there and we can get what we need, what we want, right? But. The downside is that in most grocery stores, there is no sunlight to beam down on the vegetables and fruits once they're in the produce section. And so fruits and vegetables continue to benefit from sunlight. They continue to benefit from sunlight well after, well after the point in time that they, um, Are there so I'm actually peeling the outer shells of this uh, onion because I want um, I'm going to go ahead and just have that already done I think I'm going to douse a little bit of it in this water over here. Now, if you got a big sink, what you can do is, you can do the same process in a big sink, right? But this is the first time I've done this outside, and I love it. I love it, um, especially during spring and summer, because, again, the sunlight, right? we got some sun right here, right? Gazing. I'm gazing right at the sun, right in the middle of it, and uh, it's absolutely nice, vibrant sun right now. And when you gaze directly in the sun, it feeds your pineal gland, it feeds your mind, it feeds your spirit. And yes, you see an afterglow when you're looking at other things, but I've learned how to look through the afterglow and still use my regular sight for activities like this. You ever seen those uh, videos 
where they're like in the Himalayan mountains. And they're cooking, they're cooking a skillet of food out in the Himalayan mountains. And all of this is subtitles. This is kind of like that. This, this right now is kind of like that. It's just a first world western version of it. I peel it down like that, get all the excess skin off of it, and then I just run a little bit of sodium, but it don't need to soak in it. I'm just washing it a little bit, and it, you know, it's fine as is. Yep. And then got to put it in its own bag. And when I, when I um, eat vegetables and fruits, well, let's talk about vegetables. I don't pre, I don't meal prep. I used to, but I like to slice it off a little bit at a time and leave the whole vegetable back in the refrigerator. Because I find that the vegetables last longer and when I cut just what I need and return the rest, the portion that I cut is fresher than it would be if I meal prep. Meal prep is, is convenient, but what you end up with is less fresh. Oh, I just remember something from my research. If you allow mushrooms to sit in the sun for enough time, those mushrooms will accumulate vitamin D. I'm kind of sharing some things from my research. You can get vitamin D from mushrooms if those mushrooms were bred or had a significant exposure to the sunlight during their maturation process. So I'm getting vitamin D right now, just being out here like this. So it's, it's great that we're doing this activity. And you know, it's perfectly legitimate to take these onion shavings and throw them out to the ground because it's, it's completely natural. But I'm going to put it in a garbage can, uh, regardless. So this is a great moment for me right now, because I'm out in nature. I'm by the four elements. Fire water, earth, and definitely wind. And so we got all of that together right now. And even though I don't have a watch on, my recording equipment has timers on it whenever I uh, stop the video. And I know that we have definitely went through the, the time frame for soaking this times two. So I like to feel the grittiness of this sometimes. So looks like we got this pretty well clean. I'm gonna do some more cleaning with my hands. Let's just clean this with the hands a little bit. Because you just don't want to soak it, but you want to get some kind of agitation going. It's actually a good idea to get one of those little bristle brushes and gently comb, gently brush the surface of your fruits to pull off some of the surface bacteria, but not too much because it, you can also mess up the skin of your fruits, right? See, this one got a little bit of um, infection or some of the skin is compromised, but it's still going to be good. So, 
and rather than drain this water, I'm just going to move the select uh, fruits out of here by hand. Because I usually just pour the water out and then just dump the fruit in, but I don't want to do that out here because some of the fruit might accidentally go onto the ground and I'm not going to recover it if it goes to the ground. This one here is a special case because of the skin being compromised the way it is. So take a look at that. Because when you mix fruits together where skins are compromised, spread, bacterial spread can occur more quickly. Oh, and here's another expert technique I learned that I actually came up with myself. I actually came up with this. And that is to not leave the fruits stored in a bag like this by itself. But if I pour water in here and leave it in the, in the leave water in this bag, the fruits last four times longer in the refrigerator. So if I fill this up with water, which I'm going to do later on, and put it in the refrigerator, these fruits are going to last four times longer than they normally would if I just had it in the bag. What I used to do is I would I would uh, dry the water off of it because water and moisture and heat are key for bacteria. They're key for bacteria, right? But I came up with a different philosophy. If, as long as the fruit itself has been cleaned really well, and then you transfer it to a bag and then put real clean water on it, like distilled water or spring water. I use I I was using spring water, but because it is fast, I was using some distilled water for certain things. Then what I ended up with is realizing I can use distilled water for. I can use distilled water in all the cases where I don't want to waste the spring water. The spring water is the best water for drinking and brewing tea, right? But for now on, I'm going to use distilled water for cooking and cleaning, right? And the other great thing about using distilled water in that way, you don't get the uh, mineral deposit byproduct in the pan. You don't get the mineral uh, byproduct in the pan. Right? If somebody was looking at this say, man, you have to buy water in order to cook? Hell yeah, because you ain't gonna use no tap water. Shoot, if you ain't gonna drink tap water because of all this bad stuff in tap water, then why would you cook with it? Why would you cook with uh, tap water when you're not going to, uh, I don't even brush my teeth with tap water. The only thing I use tap water for is to wash my hands and take a shower. That's all I use it for. Mother, Mother Nature said, you damn right. Blew that stuff off the ground. Alright, so this water is now done. This is kind of what it looks like. We now, you know, it's got a lot of soot and stuff, but also some of the residual. Yeah, buddy. So, we grab my supplies that went from heaven to earth. There we go. All right. Somebody bumping some uh, some soulful music back there. So, with that, I'm going to have to conclude this uh, video um, so that, um, you know, we don't end up with copyright 